Okay, sometimes we find a pattern. I read Luminarium by Alex Shakar in 2014. I gave it four out of five stars on Goodreads, and I wrote this about it shortly after reading. This book changed for me over the course of reading it. It started as an interesting, well-written story with dramatic science fiction possibilities and morphed into an impressionist abstract about philosophy and the mind or religion and the brain or reality and the self. They carried me through my beliefs in relationships, loss, goals, growth, and maybe most importantly, purpose. I think the concept has a lot more to do with 9-11 than I thought going into it. The World Trade Center attack and collapse looms as sort of a complicating incident backdrop for the downward spiral that is the majority of the meat here. When I step back and think about the story objectively, it feels like an artful statement about coping with tragedy. So many of us were affected greatly by 9-11, and for some length of time, it may have felt disconnected from our previously aimful lives. Some of us may still feel that way. Shakar, for me, has created a tangible story that puts that loss as close as it could imaginably be with it befalling a twin, another version of self. The way I experienced the book, while somewhat trivial at first, became more and more personal as I worked through it. The message I take from it is one of solidarity with Fred in his effort to remake himself, his family, and his life. I'm sure others will interpret this book differently because I tend to overthink everything, but it's my take on its impressionistic tune on the search for spirituality. Even if you race through this book with nothing but the surface story, you will enjoy the great writing and disorienting views of reality. The momentum of its negativity will be difficult for the sensitive reader, but my defense mechanism for it was evaluating the path as a set of trials toward a new enlightenment. So I talked about patterns, and obviously we've been talking about a number of different books here that deal with the veil of reality and our experience of reality. And if I think about sort of all of the reading, the science fiction reading that I've been doing since this time, or since 9-11, it's really opened me up to a lot of different ways of looking at those things. So you'll see that pattern in a lot of the books that I've read here. That's one pattern that I want to talk about, but also after seeing this here and knowing some of the books that are on the way to come, I think I'm going to create a playlist list about dealing with the 9-11 tragedy in fiction. Looking at this book, I didn't think that that was what this book was going to be, and I talk about that a little bit in the review here, but it really has a lot to do with how an immense tragedy like the World Trade Center attack can mess with your idea about life and the way that you're going through it. So I think this is a great look at this. The one that I talked about before, extremely loud and incredibly close. And that's going to be definitely be on this playlist too. That actually is listed in my favorites list for books. And some of the other books that I have that, uh, that deal with 9-11, I don't appreciate nearly as much as these, but these ones are really good. I think maybe taking this sort of alternative reality view of thinking about how that event affected you and affected the world is maybe a great way to deal with it in terms of processing grief. And again, this concept of losing a twin in such a tragic way is a great, powerful metaphor for everything that we all felt at 9-11. For my own 9-11 experience, it was wild when I had it. I was living in Los Angeles, I was working at a nonprofit in the Twin Towers in Los Angeles, far, sm far smaller than the Twin Towers in, in New York. I remember when it happened. I remember not going into work that day, and I remember for days and days and days, just listening to the live reports of combing through the rubble and trying to find anything that was there, just looking for news reports to figure out what had happened. In those days after 9-11, even in Los Angeles, on the, on the West Coast, were afflicted by power outages. It's weird to say that we were afflicted by power outages in the wake of this. We, we were in a 46th floor building, and when the power went out, after we were all dealing with the trauma of 9-11, it was one of the most terrifying things that I have experienced. In that office, with the lights going out and knowing what had just happened in New York and feeling like something was impending or something was coming for us as well. My friend Nikki and I were working in that office at the same time and we went out to get out of the building and all of the doors were shut, all of the elevators were shut and we had to charge down the stairs. We did, 46 floors coming out in a different part of the neighborhood, which happens at a lot of skyscrapers. And it was a small, terrifying experience to connect us to the larger tragedy that had happened with 9-11. A friend of mine, Mary, was in one of the buildings and she got out before it collapsed. And I know how much it has stuck with her. 
and hearing her story of survival and processing her grief over many years after it is something that is a very powerful experience. And I'm, I'm very thankful that she has been able to work her way through all that. This is an interesting book. It's science fiction, but it connects to the story of 9-11, and it may be interesting to you. Luminarium by Alex Shakar. I read it in 2014, and I give it four out of five stars on Goodreads. Till next.